We are at the Green Park here in Kanpur. We've been here many times as players before, but today it feels a little special because this is now the venue for the 500 test match for Indian cricket, which is quite an achievement. Ravi Shastri is here with me. Just four nations have managed to play 500 test matches. Now, that's a large number, and Indian cricket should be really proud of this fact. Absolutely, because it's a long journey. Started in 1932, so you know, you know, they've played all these years. They've sustained the interest of the people. You know, test matches were hard to come by. You know, in the early years, but you know, what's what we're seeing today is fabulous. You know, and we are at a heritage ground. This was one of the oldest grounds uh, in Indian cricket. When uh, India had its first original venues, Kanpur was one of them. Yes. So you know. It's, it's amazing how history just writes its own script. India played its first test match in 1932. The 100th test match, Mansoor Ali Khan Pathodi was the captain, happened in 1967. 35 long years to play their first 100 test matches. Uh, and, and again, tribute there, you know, mm. to uh, the Board of Control for Cricket in India to sustain the interest, you know, to invite teams from overseas, invite the right teams. You know, it would cost money. You know, they would want retainers, they would want uh, bank guarantees in advance. But by calling those teams like the West Indies, the Australians, you know, when New Zealand, when they were strong, you sustained the interest of the public, mm. you know, and what you did was ensure that the Indian team got good competition and became stronger decade by decade. We're talking test match cricket, mm. but you were part of that 1983 World Cup winning squad. Mm. The response, the reaction, there was a lot of adulation, fanfare, but not too many financial rewards. I mean, that is a big change when India wins now. There's also financial rewards with it. No, but that was the one single moment, you know, that redefined the way people looked at cricket in this country as a sport. You know, parents wanted young kids to play the game. You know, corporate houses came behind backing the sport like never before. You know, the sudden interest or the, just the way the cricketer was looked at by the arm janta, by the, uh, the, the corporate crowd, you know, by the blue collar was totally different. And uh, India started playing well, you know, they, they enjoyed that attention they got, you know, they, their performances showed, you won the world championship after that. You know, you again uh, staged the World Cup in India, where we lost in the semi-finals, but you had a sequence of good performances, you know, which, when television came into India, exploded. And that's why today, like I said uh, to you earlier, it's a small-scale industry you mentioned. It's a billion-dollar sport. Yeah. Uh, it's a fact. It's a billion dollar small scale industry mm. it's settled there mm -hmm. yeah so much has changed over the years you have been part of uh, this whole chain this long journey as a player mm. as a broadcaster you've also had held responsible positions within the cricket team as well if you look at indian cricket say maybe in the 70s 80s and now 2016 what is the big change you see with the brand of cricket that india has played I think fabulous. It, it's like I say, they're the backpipers of world cricket. Wherever they go, you get huge audiences. And obviously that has to reflect on some of the great players who played in that time. You know, the fact that uh, they've handed on the baton to a good young generation who play attractive cricket. And uh, let's not forget, you know, it's evolved. The game has evolved perfectly from India's point of view. You know, you have test cricket, then you have 50 over cricket. And then you have 2020 instant cricket, hmm. you know, which I think the game needs all three formats. You know, test cricket will benefit because if the money that's made out of uh, 50 over cricket and 20 over cricket is channeled back into the system at grassroots level, you'll keep having a strong test team for years to come. I'm glad you brought that topic out because this is not just about raving about hmm. Indian cricket. This is also a time when, you, of course, there's a cause for celebration, 500 test match. Test matches is a big deal. So you celebrate that landmark, but there's also a matter of concern with regards to test match cricket. Mm. Some efforts are being made to make test cricket viable, bring in the audiences, um, people at home as well. You know, the, uh, the, uh, that number can go bigger. Mm. How do you think that, that uh, can happen? And is it possible at all with the changing taste of the modern uh, audiences? It is possible if, if there is good competition. You know, if there's good competition, it is very possible. Also, I think you don't need to tweak it because luckily cricket has three formats. You know, you have games like football, baseball, 
where they haven't changed, barring one or two rules. Nothing has changed in over 100 years. So you don't want to tweak it too much to confuse the common man. Hmm. You have three formats. So leave test cricket as it is. For God's sake, leave the ball the same. Hmm. Red colour, right? The only reason why that is being attempted, Ravi, is to ensure that you play at a time when people are not working. Yep. Because when they are at work, it's not possible, even if they like Test Match Cricket, to watch it. And, and I think that is the reason why they are trying to by, maybe by, tamper. By all means, but you know, I would rather have a session under yeah, lights. That's the point you made earlier. Yeah, a, a session under light, maybe three hours under lights, which means you start not a necessarily later. At, start at one o'clock hmm. or 12.30, make sure the game gets over by 8, 8.30, so people can go back home. But the different thing you give them, you don't have to change anything too hmm. much, you know. Both sides know they will have to bat one session with a red ball under lights. Wickets might fall, runs might be scored, anything can happen. But the rules stay for both sides. Mm. It's how you adjust, adjust and adapt. As mm. long as it's not dangerous, I don't think it's dangerous with lights here today. And that could suddenly start getting in more people, you know, attract, uh, you know, make it more attractive for the television audience True. as well. You know, these are the things you've got to try and think. but without trying to tweak it too much. Mm. Now, these obviously are long-term challenges that I'm sure the world cricket is aware of. They look at this as one of the goals to achieve. The immediate challenge for Indian cricket and the BCCI is what's happening in the courts, mm. the court orders, the Loda Commission, their recommendations. So it's a, it's a huge deal. Indian cricket, uh, you know, have to tackle a lot of these recommendations which they find are unfair and might stifle the growth of Indian cricket. Some feel that it, uh, Indian cricket will not be able to stand on its feet if all these recommendations were put into place. What are your views on that? See, I didn't get a chance to speak to the uh, Lodha committee, mm -hmm. right? But they are ex-Supreme Court judges and uh, they have got experience. You know, so obviously they've gone through a lot of stuff. They've spoken to a lot of people and come up with a lot of recommendations. Now, when it comes to governance, when it comes to administration, you know, where if they felt that things weren't going well, they've got every right to mention what can be done. The same with governance. Another brief that they had been given was to sort out the fixing problem. You know, how do you sort it? You know, there has to be, it cannot be a bill has to be passed. It, you know, you should know what has to be done. Where a guy is punished in such a fashion that it deters other players from doing it. You know, so which means a recommendation to parliament to pass a bill, you know, which can put a guy in the clink mm. so that no one else will want to do it again. Fine. But there are certain areas you know, where I thought that you can still have a dialogue with mm. the Loda committee because those are things, if applied, it could take the game back. It Any could be detrimental. Um, like, for example, the cooling off period. Yeah. Okay. Why would I want to join the BCCI? Why would any player want to join the BCC? If I have an idea that is something constructive that I can do, contribute, in three years you're telling me to go. But what can anyone achieve in three years? He gets to come back, but the cooling, well, can, cooling see, period How is do all... I know the guy after me is competent mm. enough? Mm. If I have done a competent go, uh, job, I should be respected for my competency. And where I think six years is no harm. After that, if you have to sit out for three years, come back for another six, fair enough. Hmm. But six years is enough time. Even the presidential candidate of the country, it's a five-year term. Hmm. You know, unless something happens and there's an election in between, True. he stays for five years. You know, and, and that's anywhere in the world. Yeah, any other recommendation that you, you know, would Even think I of? thought the selectors thing, you know, three, when I played the game, I thought three selectors was enough. Hmm. But today, the way the game has evolved, with the three formats of the game, the interest that exists in the country, the combined number of people that play the game in India is more than the population of all the countries that play cricket together. So if Australia has three selectors, that's fine. It's 20 million people, 17 million people. Here you have 1.2 billion. I mean, you're asking that poor guy too much. You know, he'll get serious travel miles. Yeah. You know, if he's one of the three, he'll go from one end to the other of the country and still not be able to do a job. Yeah. I think five is still in order. Yeah. And another thing, you know, I've always believed there's no substitute for experience. Mm. You know, we say that in cricket. This is something I've learned from the sport. This is something I've learned when I've interacted with people from different, you know, different fields in life. Whether it's corporate, whether it's sport, 
whether it's administration, you, you, you name it. And I s certainly believe in what I'm saying. There's no substitute for experience. And we've got a couple of guys in the board. You know, they're 70 plus. Hmm. But they'll forget a youngster. They'll give anyone hmm. from any field a run for their money. You know, I'm, I'm not targeting anyone or anything because I've, I've seen them work. Yep. I've seen them as administrators. I don't want to single out or take names. I've seen them working. People know who I'm talking about because I don't mince words in any way. But they're outstanding. So, you know, just, uh, it, and these things, if you try and push it immediately, it might just be detrimental at this moment of time. So if you have to make a final sort of assessment and roundup of uh, the Lodha recommendations. I think a dialogue must still continue. You know, Overall, um, you think uh, it's a bit unfair? It, it shouldn't be like a boxing bout. Hmm. I think there has to be, where, you know, where a genuine effort should be made, you know, ideally from both parties to have a dialogue on certain things which, you know, can work. Most of the recommendations are anyway accepted and the board is trying to do something. But, you know, this, this three-year cooling period is, is harsh. And also, if you want cricketers to come into the system, spell out. Hmm. This is a prof professional job. No cricketer will want to do an honorary job. True. Yeah, it's a professional job. You know, you, you played cricket for six hours in your time. You know, at times, when you see what people get today, you got peanuts, mm. you know. But then if you pay peanuts, you'll get monkeys. So sure. get, get profes professional, you know, write the right amount of money, what mm. should be given for this job, that job, whatever comes their way. Make it professional. You'll see a lot of cricketers coming into the system. Well, thank you so much, Ravi, for talking really passionately about this. It's a very sensitive topic, but you've been very forthright. Uh, the reason and I'm passionate, Sanjay, is because it's a great cricket playing country. It is. And if things were that bad, you wouldn't have achieved what you have achieved. We're celebrating 500 test matches, you won two World Cups, you're the number one team in the world. So all cannot be wrong. Yes, there might have been areas which, you know, you needed a whack on the backside to be corrected. You know, but... Could that be the reason why some feel it's a bit extreme? I, I wouldn't say extreme. Uh, dialogue. I'm yeah. saying dialogue. You know, so, dialogue because let's be practical if it can work or not work hmm. you know because we want indian cricket to carry on we don't want it to go back five years we don't want this team to suffer where five years you'll have there'll be total chaos other teams get the upper hand and then again you have to try and climb up the ladder but be i think to be fair let's uh, let's get back to what is really important which yeah. is uh, you know cricket on the field and as i said 500 test match on this venue it's an occasion I've, I've, we've all yeah. been test cricket fans it's mm -hmm. the ultimate test for a cricketer 500 test match we are celebrating that today thousand test match for india possible or you'll test cricket might struggle to reach there or it can happen as easily as the last uh, sort of 300 matches have happened see i'll tell you you know it's again personalities i believe who make the sport uh, we had one gentleman yesterday who played 40 percent yep okay inspired generation after generation when he played the game and there was another little fellow before him yeah. who inspired yeah, us exactly to play, and play before the game. that the spinners so yeah. every era has superstars but when you have someone like a tendulkar who played across two and a half generations and where everyone in this team literally worships mm. you know suddenly from this team if you get an individual you know virat's already outstanding you get two three more individuals who will carry on that the good job that was done by the players earlier exactly what kapil dev said the Correct. other day and he's it's a legend job no, i mean a number of people and to take it forward, a number yeah. of people caps you know really yeah, inspired, uh, yeah. inspired so that will make people 10 years down the line 20 years down the line wanting to play test match cricket and 20 years down the line lo behold you might be 1000 and 1,200. You, you're talking about peanuts, you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, maybe yeah. test match cricket. Remuneration also could get a little Massive. higher. Mass highest, yeah, highest. Yes. It should Take be a the little highest. surplus from maybe T20 cricket, 50 years yeah, cricket, yeah. put into yeah, test match yeah, cricket. Yeah, yeah. Financial incentive. Yeah, Ravi, thank you so much for proper talking. Stuff that is, As yeah. always, straight Pleasure. talk. Pleasure. And uh, it was a sensitive topic uh, that came in between, but I'm passionate. nice of you to address that. I didn't talk. get a chance to speak to the panel, but since you asked me the question, I told you. Yeah, you were directing the team now, so you're back no, in. I didn't have the in, time, and, yeah, and, and that would world. have been conflict of interest if I told you anything then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for this chat. Pleasure. Well, that's it from us.